Welcome in. It's week nine of the fantasy football season, and this is Run the League waiver wire episode. Let's get right to it. What's going on, everyone? Of course, this is Run the League. We're doing waiver wire episode today. Uh, of course, on Wednesday, we will also have Stardom Sidem. And then, of course, Thursday, we have our fantasy football show. Be sure to check it all out on NFL on 365 Sports. Please like, please subscribe. That's how we're able to create even more content going forward. But without further ado, let's get into the waiver wire. So, obviously, there was some big news this week, and we'll get into a few of those topics as we go uh, through the different positions. So starting with the quarterback position, Jameis Winston, unfortunately, tore his ACL for the New Orleans Saints this weekend, and he really had a nice performance uh, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Not an easy defense to play against. He got hurt, and now I think there are a lot of things that we have to adjust, but the first thing is Taysom Hill has to be picked up off of waiver wires. This is a guy who has that rushing upside. And when you he, when you have a guy like that, he can immediately be a top 10 quarterback rest of season. And you have to look through a couple different lenses here. So Alvin Kamara with Taysom Hill, not very good. Michael Thomas with Taysom Hill, pretty good. And Michael Thomas should be back in the next couple weeks or so. But there are a lot of things that we have to look at now. And kind of the, the Saints have been a run first team, but now they're probably going to be even more so a run first team as they added Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara still there, Taysom Hill now their quarterback. I just think there's going to be a lot of running involved and they're going to rely on their defense to win a lot of games even more so than they did with Jameis Winston. So uh, Taysom Hill is my top quarterback pickup for the week uh, as far as season long goes. Not necessarily just a streamer, uh, but for season long, Taysom Hill, uh, he's a must add this week if you have room uh, on your bench or if you need a replacement at the quarterback position. Also at the quarterback spot, my streamers this week, uh, Tua Tagovailoa. Uh, he takes on Houston this week, had the tough matchup against the Bills, did not perform very well. That was to be expected, though. I think Tua is a pretty good add. I actually think he does have season-long value. Um, and taking on Houston, this is a great matchup. I expect Tua to be a top-10 quarterback this week. Um, and I expect his weapons, Devontae uh, Parker and, of course, uh, Jalen Waddell and uh, Miles Gaskin. I think this is a good week for the Miami Dolphins offense. Uh, the next guy in this also has something to do with injuries, but Ryan Tannehill takes on the Rams this week. The Rams can score a lot of points, as we've seen. Titans don't have a great defense, and Derrick Henry is now out for probably the entire fantasy football season. Might be able to come back in the playoffs if the Titans get there, but for fantasy purposes, um, yeah, th this is a problem, and that means I think Ryan Tannehill is going to have to throw the ball even more uh, than he has in the past, which makes sense. They're still going to be a run-first team, but Ryan Tannehill, I think, is going to have to throw it more. Once they get Julio Jones back, I think it'll make it a little bit easier for the Titan to Titans to say, hey, let's throw the ball 40 times a game now that we have Julio and A.J. Brown. That just simply hasn't been the case up to this point in the season. So uh, I do think Tannehill will have a nice outing. I think Julio could be back this week. And either way, uh, he still has A.J. Brown, and they're still going to be playing catch-up. So I like Tannehill this week as probably a top-12 play against a pretty good Rams defense. Uh, and then finally, I also really like Carson Wentz versus the Jets this week. They play on Thursday night football. Carson Wentz was actually a top 12 quarterback this past week against the Titans, even though if you watch the game, he really cost the Colts at the end uh, with his turnovers, which has happened to him in the past. Um, but I think he'll be a pretty nice play against the Jets this week. Moving on to the running back position. Like I said, we, we got to get into the Tennessee Titans backfield now. So Derrick Henry's out. They're going to want to run the ball still. So they went out, added Adrian Peterson. Yes, Adrian Peterson is back in the league. Yes, Adrian Peterson is the top waiver wire pickup for this week. And the reason why I say that is because this team is built around the premise of we're going to run the ball and we're going to continue to run the ball. And then we're going to hit you over the top with play action because we have A.J. Brown, we have Julio Jones, and we have a very nice play action quarterback in Ryan Tannehill. So... I think they're going to continue to do that. They're going to give the ball to Adrian Peterson quite a bit. I'm not sure if it'll be this week, but I think season long wise, this is a guy that you do want to pick up and see, you know, does Adrian Peterson still have juice or not? We're going to find that out pretty quickly, I think, but it's worth the risk. Uh, the other running back in that backfield who I do think will have a pretty significant role the rest of the season 
is Jeremy McNichols. So earlier last week, Darrington Evans went out with an injury. He's done for the year. And he was actually the guy that I think they hoped would be the backup for Derrick Henry if something were to happen. He's gone, so Adrian Peterson slides in. But that doesn't take away the role that Jeremy McNichols has, which is in the pass game and also as a decent runner as well. I mentioned I think the Titans are going to throw the ball a little bit more. And I think because of that, McNichols should have a safe floor of about, you know, four or five catches a game and also probably get five touches in the run game. And you got a pretty good running back. If he falls in the end zone, you probably have a top 20 play for the week. So I like McNichols as a pickup this week as well. Um, Moving on to another backfield that has to be addressed. Um, Last week, myself and pretty much every other fantasy guy who covers fantasy football told you to pick up Kenny Gainwell last week. And Kenny Gainwell got 12 carries, most of which came in the fourth quarter. This backfield was dominated by Jordan Howard and Boston Scott. Yes, they were playing the Detroit Lions, so I'm not going to say that Boston Scott and Jordan Howard are going to put together the kind of performance they did this past week every week. But it's clear that when this team wants to turn around and hand the ball off and they're in positive game scripts, these two guys are going to get the bulk of the carries. I don't know how many positive game scripts the Eagles are going to be in going forward, but if you are predicting that, you're predicting Boston Scott and Jordan Howard to get carries. I do think if they're losing, Kenny Gainwell will still have some fantasy relevance. So uh, it's just a murky backfield. I don't want any part of it, but if I were to go out try to add one, it would probably be Boston Scott. He'll be the guy for the next two weeks till Miles Sanders comes back. Then Miles Sanders comes in the lineup, and then Kenny Gainwell still has his role. So really, Gainwell is the guy with the safest floor because he's always going to have a role. Boston Scott is the guy that you could play over the next couple weeks along with Jordan Howard, Um, and they take on the Chargers. Uh, So it could be another good matchup. Chargers are a bad run defense, but my issue is I think the Chargers will put up points on the Eagles and they'll be kind of chasing and probably having to throw the ball a little bit more than they had to this past week. So I wouldn't spend too much on these guys. I still prefer Gainwell season long, uh, but for the next two weeks, Boston Scott is probably the better fantasy option um, over that time period till Miles Sanders comes back. Another interesting name that came up this week, uh, Carlos Hyde. James Robinson avoided serious injury, apparently, but Carlos Hyde got a lot of work. I would guess that James Robinson will probably miss this week. Um, The Jaguars take on the Bills. I just don't see the point in playing him this week. Uh, So, therefore, Carlos Hyde will probably get uh, a ton of carries, a ton of catches, a ton of work in the offense. Probably won't be very relevant work, but... If James Robinson's not there, he'll probably score you 10 fantasy points, and you're honestly not going to be too disappointed with that. Another interesting development this week, Derek Gore, the running back for the Kansas City Chiefs, kind of took over the role a little bit from Darrell Williams. It was definitely more of a split backfield than we had seen in the previous weeks. We don't know when CEH is coming back, so in deeper leagues, Derek Gore might be a fun pickup uh, for a week or two just to see if he retains the role that he had on Monday Night Football against the Giants. A couple, another deep league option is Ty Johnson, the running back for the New York Jets. He's a guy who, again, he he's just, he has a role. You know, about 30% of the snaps is what he's going to get. He's going to catch the ball probably three or four times, maybe five times. He'll probably have six or seven targets because the Jets will be playing from behind most weeks. And he's the clear backup to Michael Carter. So that's what you're getting with Ty Johnson. Again, that's deep leagues. You pick him up in you know more shallow leagues. 10-team leagues, he probably shouldn't be rostered, but 12, 14-team leagues probably should be. Um, and then also keep an eye. So obviously there's another interesting development is that the trade deadline is literally today. Uh, it's going to be in a couple hours, and so we'll know more moving parts. So if Marlon Mack gets traded uh, you know, to various places, whether it's the 49ers, the Panthers, the um, the Titans even. Uh, it'd be weird to, to send a guy within the division, but, you know, maybe the Colts decide, hey, we don't really care if the Titans are good. Um, we'll play for next year, something like that, maybe if they get the best offer. Uh, but keep an eye on Marlon Mack, also Ronald Jones, just to see if these guys get moved because obviously if they go to different situations where they're starting running back or have a bigger role, I mean, they could be pretty good running backs uh, in fantasy football. Moving on to the wide receiver position, uh, Jacksonville Jaguar wide receiver Jamal Agnew. Interesting development here. So he had 12 targets this past week coming off the bye week. He's got 
three straight top 40 finishes. So he's basically locked into a a low-end wide receiver three, kind of in that territory. And it's just weird. Uh, It's really weird. I I think LaVisca Chenault is a really talented wide receiver, but it seems like Trevor Lawrence has a better connection with Jamal Agnew and, of course, Marvin Jones. And it's just becoming really frustrating because it doesn't really make sense that they're designing their game plan around Agnew making all these plays when you have a dynamic playmaker like LaVisca Chenault, but it's what's happening. So we got to keep up with the trends. Uh, Van Jefferson, the wide receiver for the Rams, um, he's one of the more interesting guys. And over the past few weeks, I've kind of been thinking to myself, you know, of the handcuff wide receivers, who is the best? So, you know, there's a few out there when you think about you know, K.J. Osborne with the Vikings. When you think about, um, you know, he's the main one that comes to mind. McCole Hardman for the Chiefs just because, you know, if something were to happen to Kelsey or Hill, you would think Hardman would have a bigger bigger role in the offense. But Van Jefferson is one of those guys. The Rams offense is really good. If Woods or Cup were to be out for an extended period of time, I think Van Jefferson would have very high-end value. And Even with those guys in the lineup, he's just a big play waiting to happen. Deshaun Jackson has asked for a trade, so it's clear Van Jefferson is the guy they're moving forward with as their deep ball threat, their big play threat. Um, So I like Van Jefferson. I wouldn't spend too much on him, but if you need help at wide receiver, you want a boom or bust play, Van Jefferson makes a lot of sense for that. Another name to keep an eye on is Darius Slayton. His name's been brought up in trade discussions. Um, Kadarius Toney. He's back. Uh, We'll see when Kenny Galladay is back. Sterling Shepard got hurt again. So I don't really know what the Giants are planning on doing at that position. It would make sense if they traded him. If he landed in a good spot, again, Slayton's a a decent wide receiver and should be a guy that uh, you could pick up and play immediately if he goes to the right spot. It's just hard with the Giants right now. He's just not seeing a ton of targets. Uh, Was blanked this week against the Chiefs in what you would have thought would have been a good matchup for him. But they're just too crowded at wide receiver, even when they're not fully healthy, which has kind of been a weird development um, for the Giants. Moving on to the tight end position, uh, Vikings tight end Tyler Conklin. uh, He caught five catches for 57 yards, and this was coming off the bye week, which should tell you something. It means they're clearly trying to give him a role in the passing attack. Kirk Cousins has not been good throwing the ball down the field, been much more comfortable closer to the line to scrimmage. So Tyler Conklin makes a lot of sense for this offense, and they take on Baltimore this week. Um, I think there's a good chance he catches five more balls this week in what could be a, a probably not a shootout, but should be a fairly good game back and forth a little bit with a pretty good game script for Tyler Conklin. Uh, Evan Ingram. The Giants tight end, he got a touchdown this week, and they take on the Raiders this next week. So he's kind of interesting, but the bigger news was that he's been linked to the Green Bay Packers. Of course, Packers lost Robert Tunyon this week. So what if Ingram ended up with the Packers? You know, we've sat here and talked about Evan Ingram a lot, and I've thought about, you know, the kind of player Evan Ingram was when he was a rookie. He's the best rookie tight end of all time until, of course, Kyle Pitts this year. Um, and so if Ingram's talent translates and if there's a new you know, will, a new desire, a new offense, a fresh start with Aaron Rodgers, an all-time great quarterback, who knows what that could mean for Evan Ingram, but I like the upside there. Uh, also really like Dan Arnold, uh, the Jaguars tight end. Again, coming off a bye, he comes out eight catches for 68 yards. Tight end number two on the week it's clear the Jaguars want to give him touches. And because of that, coming off the bye week, it makes a lot of sense to go ahead and add Dan Arnold this week. Uh, My streamer of the week on defense, it's the Cardinals versus the 49ers. The Cardinals might be out there uh, on the waiver wire, and you might be able to pick them up. Another option that I really like this week is the Colts versus the Jets. Uh, If the Colts defense is out there, go pick them up. They should have a pretty nice week as they try to rebound from the loss to the Titans. Uh, my top three matchups this week going in uh, to week nine of the fantasy football season, uh, Packers versus Chiefs. Uh, this should be a very high-scoring game. Uh, hopefully, Devontae Adams is back. Uh, hopefully, it's a, a shootout. That's what we want to see, right? We want to see Aaron Rodgers throw for 400 yards, see Patrick Mahomes throw for 400 yards, have the score be something like 41 to 38, um, and everyone goes home happy. 
that's what we're hoping to see. Uh, but the way the Chiefs and the Packers have played, it's probably going to be something like you know, 24-21 and kind of be a little bit more boring than we would hope for uh, just because those two teams have kind of been a little bit different than we thought. Packers a little more run heavy. Chiefs, bad defense, turning the ball over too much. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, Ravens versus Vikings is the other matchup I like this week. I think both teams are are both very solid and both have shown flashes of being a really solid football team, but neither one has really put it all together in my opinion. And so um, I'm very curious to see how this plays out. I think it's going to be very run heavy for both teams this week. And then finally, Sunday night football, the Rams take on the Titans, uh, both teams playing really good football, but I'm curious if the Titans take a step back without Derrick Henry, and if the Rams can exploit that. Um, but I think either way, both teams are going to be throwing the ball a ton, putting up some points, and it should be a really fun uh, football game for fantasy football purposes. But for the waiver wire episode, uh, that is it. Those are the waiver wire pickups this week. Um, we will check in again for Stardom Sidem later in the week, and of course, Fantasy Football Show on Thursday. But this has been Run the League with Grayson Grunhafer on NFL on 365 Sports. <laughs> <laughs>